chance yet. We haven't seen him picked up, and there it there is. There it is, first chase of the day. So Jace versus Jack's top lane. We're assuming it's going to be Jack's top lane, not jungle. And Nunu has the support for Kuja. Which way are Curse going to go with their picks? I guess it's going to be the AD carry and the support. Right. They could go for a Sona composition here if they wanted to. Super and creating have been very, very solid. They, they pick... Fair, there goes my voice again. Yeah. They pick very defensive compositions in the bottom lane. As far as I can check that, they're, they're the main almost ninja tabby every game that they've played. I think Eclipsia does the same for the most part on their AD carries. I'd expect almost just a Corky here just to be safe. It seems like they've had a lot of success on that. And maybe a Sona, but they are really taking their time with these picks. Yeah, they really are. Because, like I said, they know each other so well. It's, it's just something they have to be careful with. Because waiting every little second of it and as my friend Maokai. said we're just draining our life as we watch these uh why are they the making me drain my down. life yeah i mean when you see it in a, a normal game you just think you know come on oh. this would be the time to pick it they still don't know what they're going to pick into but right. maluno on maokai is pretty a good thing i mean maokai why have we not seen a Maokai this tournament? It's been banned a lot. It's been banned quite a bit. Moscow 5 has been banning it every game they've had an opportunity to. Nunu Kog would make a lot of sense for them to yep. go here. And if they if they pick Fizz, I, I see them picking it last, even now. I feel like they'd take, a, take their jungler and their AD right here, if they can. And I think this is why the picks and bans are taking so long. Because the crowd <laughs> reacts to everything, and the players love to throw it the, in. The players love to hear the crowd cheer. Why not? I mean, they've got the helicopter headsets on, which technically does knock them out, but it still doesn't stop that rumbling roar that you Yeah, get. you still feel it and see it. So eight seconds left. Well, if Tariq, if Tariq gets locked in, it, it means that Kuja, Kuja could certainly be the jungle. Actually, well, I'm so fresh. Jungle Nunu, yes, it could well be. It is Jungle Nunu. And there's Renekton getting locked in as well. And wow, so, mm -hmm. so Jungle Nunu. Not seen that in a while. Well, here's the strange thing here. That's Jace as well, so that's either an AD Jace. Oh, yeah. Wait or a, a mid Jace we with saw some really weird setup. We saw mid Jace. Lone Star. Mm -hmm. It was on Lone Star yesterday, last night, or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, <clears throat> it was Fear, I believe, that ran it in the middle. But that still wouldn't make much sense because they'd have absolutely no AP damage. This to me says Jace AD. Like this to me oh, says Heydol is playing AD. AD. Carry Heidel. That's what I'm well, guessing. Well Infinity Edge on Jace with your hypercharge is actually a boatload of damage if if you get late game. And early game setting up with Dazzles and Armor Shred for his kind of hyper shock blast yeah. is pretty devastating. And Curse, they've really tipped their hand here in a sense though, kind of they're showing them that look, we have a jungler, a support, a top lane. Like there's there's no way that this fits around and doesn't doesn't give them something. So going the Moscow five route, it's gonna be Zillion Jax Fizz. coming in there. And as it stands. Well, that's a, that's a pretty good team comp for Curse, but this is all a very interesting team comp for Eclipse here. I'm, mm. I'm actually quite excited to see how this one's going to turn out. And look at this. Good guy, Eclipse here. They've all got honorable opponents. <laughs> actually, tell a lie. That honorable opponent, EC Tabs HD, is Civ HD's account. <laughs> so let's say Civ's <laughs> honorable, not Tabs, because Tabs oh is Oh, my. What are we going to finally get locked in? I expect a fizz. Like, it's... It's a high amount of assassination AP damage, and the way you counter assassins is generally by stacking MR to take rid of their burst. And that's exactly what you want to force the other team into when you bring so many physical damage dealers in the rest of your lineup. And he's amazing with it, so I don't see why he'd go away. Any kind of magic damage dealing assassin, but most likely Fizz. We're going to build up to it. <laughs> that's the cheer, but it's going to be Diana. Ah. Oh. <laughs> the crowd boos. Same reaction I had, man. Yeah. You know, you build the crowd up like that and switch it away. They're only going to boo you. you it's, you're, you're kind of working into it. So, team comps being set up. It is going to be cursed with the Jack Zillion, something we've seen so often uh, for last, really, in, in Europe, that is. I don't yeah. know where we, where, have we seen it really in any other country? You don't see it that often in other, no. in other regions. Never seen an A play in it. No, you see them, you see them on like York Casio, which is a yeah. different type of revive comp. This is just, it, it's sort of the same concept, but maybe slightly stronger laners. Really, the comeback of Zillion in this tourney here. 
So the bottom lane is going to be Corky Lulu. It's going to be Maokai Jungle. Meanwhile, for Eclipsia, this is definitely an interesting setup. So it is going to be Jay's top lane. It is going to be Kuja as the carry. It's going to be Heidel on Renekton, unless they do a last second swap. Heidel and enemies. No. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, there is the swap. So, so Heidel, say, why, why would you do a ranged? But it is going to be Heidel as the AD carry. That is going to be awesome. I, I've been waiting to see this for a really long time. Jace has all the tools. I mean, his initial intent was to be able to go top, bottom, or jungle, and we've pretty much only seen him in the top lane. So if uh, Piri is there, let's try and take a look at Heidel and see exactly what he's going to be running on that Jace to that see would be awesome. what he's going to go with. But since... Oh, he's moving. There we, we go. go. We Jace. Have life. Jace. Jace Heidel on the bottom of the right. The I'm, I'm guessing it's just going to be flat AD, but he might do something creative here. 16 AD, everyone loves that. Blue rune. Standard. Yeah, and mastery is, I'm guessing, 21 offense. 19, 19 for the 11. trade. Bruzo. Also barely standard. So no surprises. You don't really see surprises on AD carries. Let's see what Renekton's rune page is. So tons of damage. Or enemies, so to speak. 15 AD, these guys getting standard. A lot of these rune pages, armor and MR, are so prevalent. If you want to build a cheap rune page for yourself, build armor. They're the cheapest yellow runes, and they'll just go the distance for you, working almost every time in 1911. So slightly aggressive Renekton masteries there. A little bit different there. He didn't go lifesteal, went for Havoc instead, but that'll work just fine. Let's have a look at Nunu in jungle, because it's yeah. something we haven't seen for there quite a while. I'm so fresh. <laughs> 2,800 rated. Move speed, attack speed, those are the same runes that we've seen on Skarner and you'll see on Udyr. So move speed, attack speed, armor, Bonjour, MR18. Chips. Hello, chips. Hello. If you look at runes okay. and masteries, and then 0219, so move speed maxed. Got them. You can see he went all into move speed in the utility tree instead of mana regen, so he's really looking to just get into ice blast range on Nunu. It's going to be very important for him. So let's have a look across against his opponent, Maluno. On Maokai, something we've seen a lot of. I've seen Maluno on this hero. Oh, Gold per eight. 10, oh, wow. Maokai. So, not move speed. Other than that, that's a very that's that's actually the same rune page that the this enemy Nunu has, page. except for move speed. Yeah. Yeah. And then masteries. I, w I wouldn't be surprised if he got Gold per 10 masteries as well. Yeah, 15 15 for defense utility on Maokai. So, that which, is something. That tells me he's playing on ganking lots rather than farming out, which means I guess we're going to yeah. see the top fun getting the farm, the bottom getting the farm maybe when at the start, and the race are going to be taken away all the time. Maluno is going to be spending a lot of time in the lanes. I mean, Maokai is really the definition of a support jungler, so why don't you bring support runes and masteries, right? It's a natural evolution. That's, that's clever by Maluno. Let's check out Super A's as the support wants to see. Check out the runes there. Goal per 10, stacking out the armor, so playing very defensive there. And let's check the masteries on Lulu as well. 15, 14, so you know, not too far off of Maokai's masteries, aside from the attack speed. So Easy for you to say. Support matching. <laughs> you no, are. it's not easy for me to say, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Your voice is going. It is changing. This, this is nice. For once, it's not me that's uh, been drifting away. But that is the game, ladies and gentlemen. It is the final. It's Tales of the Lane. Curse versus Eclipsia. Game one about to get underway. Curse are going to be playing as the blue team. And as you can see, the game is about to launch, or we certainly hope it is. It's one of those scary moments when it all goes black and you're just like, eh, what's happening? Uh, there are the beautiful, beautiful signs. You can see the flame of curse on the left-hand side and the crescent... What would you call that? The crescent moon, I guess. And maybe uh, the eclipse? Eclipse. Eclipse, yeah. Let's see what yep. they did there. Let's see what they did there. Just clicked. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah, you can see it. It's the, uh, the eclipse. So eclipse, yeah, are uh, pretty much on the ball there. So... What are we taking from this one? What are we taking from these two team comps you right. can see loading on your screen right now? So I'm just taking a look here, and it looks like Curse is going to be all about just getting English fed in a lot of ways. The Earthrider Corky on Creatine will be interesting, but this is this is almost an identical comp from something we've seen earlier. So they're going to be pretty well off for Eclipsia. It's going to be really a lot about the early game because... And it's going to be a lot about that Taric Jace lane. That is a kill lane through and through, and if that lane capitalizes for them, then Tabs will be able to go around the map with the rest of them. And there's the crowd pump, getting everyone excited for this game. See whether, I don't know which here, which one that one was, whether it was Curse or Eclipsia, but either way, Curse as the blue team, Eclipsia as the red team. Here we go, are we going to see our level one engage? That is a thing we need to check, looking like Eclipsia certainly feeling the bruiserish, so they are looking to push the pace here. Curse doing the usual snipe position. This yeah, has become almost a, a standard position now that trying to capture that guy that goes to place that ward at Wraiths. 
Well, it's one of those things, they're just reacting to each other because it had become common to get that ward into the Wraith brush. So they just started camping it, and if a guy overextends, they're going to go kill him. But instead, they're scouting here with Jace's Q, and they might be looking for a delayed blue invade. So that shock burst being the uh, launch point for Eclipse here to make their way into the blue. So they come around. I guess we're going to see a ward go down. Yes, we will. And again, it's Kuja, so it's going to be a ping vision ward. They're going to get full sight of what exactly happens there, and A, whether they're going to put the ward down themselves. Oh, they might just wait here for it. So something Kuja does is he'll start every game with two pink wards and one green ward, and then his health potion's much different than most Not support boots. players. Not boots at all. And they are just hoping... But Angus is actually going back. So he's not going to pass by there. He's going to go straight back. They could still delay to invade this with three if they're patient enough. It'd be a very long delay for Maokai. He might just be starting race and then go right up to blue. If he goes to red, then this is entirely wasted time. But I've seen this path by Maokai in the past. Judging by the fact that Extinct is still here, I would expect that they're going red. They must be red, going red. Yeah. And here goes Eclipse here. Eclipse here on the move. They've already sent the bottom lane down, so they're going to go and just try and take away that blue buff from Maluno, which is actually a problem. Maokai kind of needs that blue buff early on. And Angus is going to spot them out, actually, so they'll realize what's happening, but there's no way they can stop this. Now it's on Maluno to try and get this back because a Maokai who gets half his jungle stolen isn't actually that good of a counter jungler, so that could be a nice, quick, aggressive play by Eclipse to give him an early edge. So you can see the lanes start to stack up. And let's have a look at this bottom lane. It is going to be Corky and Lulu versus Tarek and Jace. And honestly, I'm so interested to see how Jace is going to work out in this yeah, bottom we, lane. Yeah, we need to spend a lot of attention to this bottom lane. I don't think they're going to be doing much until level 3-ish is when that lane will really take off and he gets two points into his Q. But that's really when the damage will start flying with the stun. Tarek's going to be maxing Shadow. They're going to spike them out. And there's a cleanse and trade back right away. Very Jace is not cleanse. that good at trading at level 1, so that was a good counterattack by Curse. Yeah, Heidel was not expecting that cleanse straight away. They were expecting it, trying to bait it almost. And they do manage to put that cleanse down. But Kuja's getting ready to go straight in for another dazzle. The pause comes out, though. So let's have a quick look at the map. You can see that I'm So Fresh has returned. He's on his red buff. You can't move the map while we pause, but... Maluno now coming across. He's just picked up the wolves. He's going back to the wraith, so he's going to be picking up everything that he can. Oh, uh, no. Turn the chat off. Oh, yeah. Turn the turn chat off. off. That's not a good nope, idea bad at idea. all. <laughs> yep. There we go. Yeah. Sometimes it's nice to see why they pause, but it is a good policy yeah, to keep the chat problem, off but yeah. in tournaments. It's, uh, um, keyboard problems should be fairly easy to fix. There it is. And there it is. Awesome. Straight back into it. So, Jax versus Renekton in that bottom, uh, top lane, sorry. It's going to be the lane that's... Uh, is actually probably both going to farm out. They're pretty even in lane. That was the... Sorry, I missed that. Oh, actually, oh there's bottom. Go on right Kretz, on Kretz and had to flash out this time. He's going to turn around, try and put the damage on towards Heidel. You can see it's still coming out. Kuja might be in problems now. He backs away. Super S turns back around, puts the Glitterlands back on towards Heidel. And meanwhile, the Siege Minions doing all the damage on towards Heidel there. It's still shooting him. It's finally managed to trade across. Shock Blast with Acceleration Gate on towards Kreaton. And this is a very, very tight lane. We do also have Nunu sat in that top lane. And look at where this lane froze, actually, in the bottom. I don't think Nunu's going to do anything. They, uh, they didn't quite freeze it in just the right spot. They might have been able to deny them level 2 while they hit level 3 themselves, but they got enough creeps down. They still might try to dive this. Hadel has his heal up, and there is no ignite to counterattack, so that'll be a full heal if they decide to go on aggressive here. The shock blast continues over. They got a big wave of minions there. Meanwhile, the top lane is actually shoving. I'm so fresh. Takes a peek across, but it is not enough, and Angus is just backing away without getting any damage done to him. You can see I'm So Fresh comes around, takes a bit of a lane tax, consumes a minion, and I assume we'll back away. They do have a rather large stack here, so whether they're going to continue pressuring both the turrets, maybe they're going to try and force this top turret oh, down. They're in trouble. But meanwhile, the bottom one, Super S, does manage to get it. They've got the acceleration gate. Should be enough. Maokai's going to come up. He's going to have to flash Twisted Advance. He's going to continue going for it. Instead, they do both back off, and they are going to avoid any damage. Angus, meanwhile, was pushed heavily on his turret. Let's have a look at the CS. Hasn't really been that affected. And Angus is still actually keeping ahead of enemies in that top lane on Renekton. So that's really good for Angus there. If you can trade with Renekton in lane as Jax, you're winning. As for the junglers, you can see I'm so fresh. When they played SK, he is no stranger to just taking XP in lane. They're very much about sharing. Usually a good strategy. It gives everyone across the map more experience. He just needs to be able to turn it into something. In mid lane, extinct against tabs. Extinct actually doing quite well here, as my voice 
falls another stretch okay, down. But I mean, the bottom the line, 28 to 17 CS, mm -hmm. good farm currently coming out from Kraton, despite the fact they've been so aggressive back and forth between each other. You can see Angus really causing problems. Actually, I thought he was going to give up some CS on the siege minion there, but instead he turned around and put a whack on towards enemies and then continued his merry farming. So he's doing a very good job at last hitting in there. Meanwhile, in the middle, obviously the bombs from Zidian definitely going to cause some problems. Continue on. So the jungle is still not able to affect anything currently in the game, despite the fact they did get those um, invades on and the fact Maluno did lose out. Oh, I'm so fresh, obviously going to be ahead right now in that lane. Mainly oh, gank, mid lane. Oh, mid lane, I'm so fresh. He's going to come around on towards the backside of Extinct. Extinct should be able to walk away from this one. He can speed himself. He's going to get slowed. The red buff on him as well. Is it going to be enough? Tabs is just about closing rounds. Tabs is going to get in there just in time. But there's going to be Maluna. Maluna comes around. They pop the board down. Twisted advance was enough. It's going to be just send him away. Send him packing with one of those little presents just for his troubles. And the saplings don't quite do enough damage to exchange. If Tabs had got close enough, that would have been a kill. He just had ended his up. Mind. Tabs was actually level five was the thing. He just yeah. pinged six. So that was somewhat poor timing. Extinct was in a good spot of the lane That's for the moment. That's a big problem. If he was still five, Tabs had <laughs> extinct and already hit six. Right. Well, he is Zillion, so he gets yeah. extended experience. And he had shoved up the lane, which really helped him out there. And it's another smart build here by Kreaton, making sure he got that cloth armor very early on because this Jace Tarek bot is very, very much kill oriented. They're making sure they can't get bursted out, at least for now. So Renekton in the form of enemies or tons of damage on your screen has gone towards uh, taking his own golems so he's going to take the top golems away from i'm so fresh i'm so fresh continuing to try and cover off this mid lane he's going to put the wards down there's going to be a cleanse straight away creates on actually back up towards heidel have had to use the acceleration gates valkyrie in after heidel heidel having to switch and hammer him away keep that damage away they've pinged on towards i'm so fresh they've realized where he is maluno is going to move around there and try and track his position he's going around for that red buff but Maluno Ooh, has his position, up. he's tried to ward it, and he's going to go straight in there, and the immediate reaction from Extinct forces the flash from I'm So Fresh, good use there. Keeps him away, top lane Extinct, uh, so Ed Renekton's actually losing a lot of damage in the top lane as well, Angus trading back and forth between them, a ulti used by tons of damage. And, and they Angus traded Ignites up there as well. But overall, Curse does seem to be winning out these lanes, bottom lane is not able to pull off any kills, they seem to be out trading them. Mid lane had the XP edge, I'm so fresh, had to flash over the wall with a failed counter jungle attempt. And really, Extinct is staying dead even with enemies in the top lane, so very well played here. And now I'm so fresh, in a bit of danger, no flash up. Twisted Advance gets the knockback as well, not quite in tower range, but it could be enough damage. They do manage to turn it. Tabs, though, goes on towards Maluna, gets the first blood, dives on the turret, uses his flash. Great ulti as well from Tabs there. Knew exactly how much damage he could do. Tabs, we said how good of an assassin player he is, and he just pounced in on that. So while we thought that I'm so fresh was in a bad position, that was clearly a fairly planned play by Eclipsey, and it baited Maluno into a false dive on him and cost him his life there. First blood. So first blood comes out, and it is at the cost of the jungler. The question is, how much will that affect him? He's got the Phil Philo Stone, nearly got the Heart of Gold out there. Remember, he's already got the GP10 runes as well. So technically, he's probably ahead slightly, despite the fact there is an assist on I'm So Fresh. I think he may be ahead of him slightly in gold. Yeah, if there was a time even. to die as Maokai, it would be kind of then. No oracles, didn't have any buffs. It was one of the lowest impact deaths he could have had. So not the most ideal, but still not that bad. And interestingly, Angus helping out the blue there. So he leaves the blue, took tank the blue. Angus about to go back and buys a big wave on his turret though. But uh, he's going to lose out now on tons of damage. Also going back. Super Perez warding out there. And let's put the pink ward down. And actually, we may even see a little bit of a support fight coming on here. Angus, I think he's going to put... Oh, he only went with the normal ward, actually. And immediately, Super Az goes and clears that ward out. So there's going to be a ward death because that's why the crowd's cheering. Good call. Yeah. The Good pink ward's coming through. They, they were looking for something to cheer about there. It was definitely coming. Uh, Wraith's just been stolen away by the mid lane of Tabs. And they are returning to lane. So, this bottom lane, how is it leveling out? Creaton is out farming, is taking a shot blast to the face, but he is 64 to 51 in terms of CS. The bomb's going back on towards Tabs, and Extinct continuing to farm out the minions just about. Yeah, at least right now, this bottom lane is a failure for Eclipsia because you don't pick Tarek Jace to lose the lane to Corky Lulu. They very much wanted to get kills, and they have not been able to pull the trigger on pretty much any of these. They actually get counter-aggressed on fairly often, and now it looks like they've kind of 
fallen back to just shoving the lane and trying to avoid really any conflicts with Curse. Their next sweet spot would be around level 9 when they might want to try to do something with the maxed Q on Jace. But for now, they're in passive farm mode, and that's a good thing for Curse. So looking like a rushed Sunfire Cape again from Renekton this time in that top lane. Something we've seen throughout this tournament, actually. Kraton going aggressive on towards Heidel and Kuja, popping that ultimate, Kim continuing the blast there and hammered away by Kraton. Glilance is coming out from Super S as well, just forces him away, continues back on his CS, and this is really how they're starting to gain those advantages. They're being aggressive, forcing them away, and then cleaning up the CS. Causing, forcing Heidel actually to keep switching roles there, and now Maluna is going to come round and again. They've had to use that acceleration gate just to get away, rather than to use it as a shock blast attack. And I'm so fresh, also looking for a gank in the top lane. Giant's Belt Rush once again in this tournament. You said Sunfire Cape Rush, but the Giant's Belt Rush, maybe you said that as that's, well. That's what I said. I'm getting distracted with all my coughing, so yeah. please forgive me, stream viewers, for the repeated phrases. Other than that, Maluno really spending a lot of time bottom here. They're hoping that Jace Terra gets aggressive, and if they go in with a the stun, they're going to get turned around on really harshly. So mid lane, Tabs is on no health. Meanwhile, at the top lane, Angus with the Ignite running. And you can see Renekton had to use his ultimate. And that's the kind of the advantage at the moment, because he has that Giant's Belt. There's only a Sheen currently on Angus, and Angus realizing he's got to get away from this one. He could easily dash across two of those sets of minions and completely close the gap on towards Angus. Angus is trying to stick around, but he's going to lose a lot of hit points on that tower. He's if he got to get out of here. Back there. Extinct's going up there as well as the gank bottom. Kuja's in trouble. Kuja's getting hit, but there's no ultimate being blocked by Heidel there. And Lulu had to use the ultimate, trying to block him away there. Very good defensive work from the actual AD carry blocking and defending his support. Sometimes what goes around comes around, and you know, you can got to help out your support as and when it's needed. And well, we did see him running up towards the top there, but Extinct backed back off. Considering all the aggression and action we've seen in every game this tournament, this is probably the lowest action game we've seen yet. These teams really feeling each other out, not doing anything too crazy. They know each other very well because they practice with each other oh so much. Renekton is starting to win out that top lane. That's really the only area where they have an advantage. Even, you know, maybe Tabs is Diana because he did pick up that kill onto Maluno's Maokai, but I don't see it until he starts converting these roams around. He needs to go bottom, really, and help Jason and Tarek get going. But with the ward coverage and with the way they've been pinging the MIAs and shoving the lanes, they're just not allowing him to leave. So it's a 500 gold advantage in the top lane. It's around about a 500 gold in the middle and at the bottom. It swings the other way. So as it is, Eclipse here are definitely out farming, definitely out killing. Oh, hello, we're going to have I'm So Fresh popping his absolute zero on the turret there. Almost in protection for Tabs. Doesn't need to save it for any particular reason. He's the jungler. Yeah. I mean, Maluno's actually, with that death, even though he's got the double GP10s and the items, I guess it's kind of his plan, but he feels behind right now. You can really see he's getting bullied around a bit. Even with Zillion on his team, he's still behind in experience versus I'm So Fresh. And... I feel like these teams really got to get an Oracles going soon because every time they walk up towards the lane, they're getting spotted out by a ward and the passive farming continues. We see I am so fresh. He put that ward in that red buff once again there. Kuja continuing to try and get that dazzle on towards Kraton. This time Valkyrie is away. Shock blast onto him. It's the easiest shot you can ever make. Sets it up every time. So, But look at how tanky Corky is right now. Ninja Tabi, double thorns, and a health crystal. The, they're just not really doing much damage to him. That Jace lane is supposed to just chunk people down. It's not working that way at all, and it is getting crushed back. So even though they have the top lane and a slight mid lane advantage, it's all getting given back here in this bottom lane with Corky. And there's the Oracle being picked up by Maluno, so he maybe is going to clear it out. The irony is that most of the wards are kind of timing out now. <laughs> they will get replaced. Look at the next rotation. I mean, as long as he holds on to the Oracles until he needs it and doesn't end up giving it up, he's going to be a little careful when he comes in for tabs mid because of the burst potential tabs has and the fact he has just that null magic. But the Oracles is a good purchase. But we've seen a different Maokai played from what we normally see, or what we've certainly seen in the uh, MLG um, full championships. It was a lot of boots of mobility mm -hmm. used. We, I don't remember seeing a boots of mobility once today from any jungler. No, we'd see it almost every game, yeah. whether it was Cho'Gath or Maokai last weekend. These junglers just going a different style. I mean, at least with the way this game is going. Oh, here comes the gang. Here comes I'm So Fresh. Is he going to have Absolute Zero available? He has just used it a moment don't ago. Don't even touch it's him. Not. Didn't even get near it because the ultimate from Lulu, from Creaton, just kept them all the way, bounced them all up. He is going to come around for a second bite of the cherry, though, and they may be even just going to push on towards the turret there. I'm so fresh, comes around. 
Tabs stealing away the Wraiths once again, actually, from Extinct. And now he's going to come around the backside of Extinct. He's already used his bombs. And they're going to have to back away. Meanwhile, down the bottom turret, you can see they're really just completely putting the pressure on towards that turret. They're going to get this one before the wave finishes. High Lime so fresh, and Kuja managing to take the first turret. Back in the middle, are actually diving on towards it. Extinct has to pop his own ultimate, but he's going to walk away from this one. Is it going to be enough? Realize he's got to flash out of the danger because Tabs could certainly dive the turret. He knew that Tab still had his Ignite as well. That could have been a very good kill for Diana. But because of that turret push and because of that force middle, they're going to go towards the Dragon. And even though they haven't created any action via kills with the turret and now potentially a Dragon, this could be a good advantage they picked up. So first Dragon of the game, and it is Eclipse here picking it up. They are looking strong throughout the lanes here. Despite the fact they've lost out that bottom, they are certainly winning the top and the middle. And Tabs, once again, starting to pick those advantages in the mid-AP. We are seeing Jax actually causing problems with Renekton around this red buff. He's, He's got still it on a ward. It's going to go leaping in any second. Now, there it is. He got it. Gets the steal and then turns around on towards enemies. Enemies has got to be careful. There's nobody anywhere near him. He's got a ward there. I don't think he obviously realized there must be something there. The fact that he could jump straight onto it. And he does back off. And now we're seeing the Oracle from Maluna finally getting used as the cheer for one ward goes down. That Sheen plus the Empower really allowed Angus to spike a bunch of damage onto red buff. Really, enemies had no chance of getting that with the ward being there. And now, actually, we see some roam from Extinct might be coming up. There's a lot of damage down on him, and here comes Zill. And this is the problem. When they get that Sheen, they could just burst it. Renekton having to use the ultimate. It's not enough to turn them bombs around. Angus just backs out of it. There's going to be enemies going down. It is Extinct that picks up the kill, and they needed that kill. They hadn't been able to create anything up until that, but the initiative was taken by Angus really to get the red buff, and that set everything up. It allowed Renekton to be low before the turret dive, and now it, it kind of allowed the roam to come up and be successful as well. That was really the lane that they needed to turn around as well, so now they're winning in most areas of the map. So we see I'm so fresh head towards the top. Let's have a look towards the rest of the lanes down the bottom here. It is 143 to 109 CS, 4,700 to 4,200. So still at 500 gap, but it's still equal out across the board. The mid lane, actually, the junglers are very even. The mid lane is starting to balance itself, but it's still a thousand difference in five of it tabs. So he has that advantage. He got the kill. He's had the farm. And you can see 40 CS advantage equates to just around about 1K gold. He's been stealing them race away pretty much the whole game. Yeah, I should. we should mention that Tabs is actually doing quite a job yeah. onto Extinct. And it's, it, it's the main reason they're actually up 1,200 gold, well, aside from the turret, but... I am just missing everything. We got Sorcerer Shoes Abyssal Scepter as well. He really needs to start roaming because he actually got roamed on by Extinct there. And they have to create something. Now both teams with an Oracles as well, so we should be seeing some action soon. Yeah, I'm so fresh going on towards Angus there. He does manage to get the slow down. The stun will come out. And there it is. Counter Strike's on. He's going to go on towards the turret. It's a dangerous, dangerous thing to dive, dive on towards the Jacks. And they've realized that they're going to immediately switch their role. And they're looking like they're pinging on towards the mid lane here. So Tabs is going to come in. He's going to clear the wave. They spot him a Luna. They're going for the blue buff. They wore the, out the blue. They I'm trying to think what oracles. the timing is. They're going to put pressure on towards Extinct. They may even just dive on towards Extinct here. They've got everybody collapsing in. You can see the They're bottom definitely going to push lanes. mid, though. The two ADs are coming around here. Kuja and Heidel are going to see if they can catch anyone out. Here they come. Is it going to be the red or is it going to be the mid turret? It's the mid turret they're going for, and they're on it. Everybody on it. They're going to collapse around it, and that's going to be the mid turret picked up by Eclipsia. And second turret picked up very much safely there's no danger whatsoever there and, and i'll tell you what down that bottom lane he's got to be careful he's got to back away and this is something i'm so fresh did a really good job of against sk as well he just roams in the lanes at the right moment and even though he's not going for kills they just get turrets and objectives out of it doing a fairly good job thus far so as it stands top lane 144 to 141 very much even between angus and enemies or well, tons of damage on renekton the two junglers 90 to 74 keeping up on top of things but you know we saw maluna with that gold he hasn't really got involved he hasn't been able to make the kills got mercury treads instead of uh, boots and mobility so not going to be zipping around there mid lane massive difference 50 cs grab being extended by tabs tabs 198 closing on the 200 but extinct if you leave him alone he'll be able to farm back up like that just keep wiping out the waves maluna picking up that bottom lane honestly it's actually pretty close Despite the fact it's, it's a 20 CS difference, Jace yeah. could come into his own. There could be that poke comp that's going to come into this. He's going to need to get his Bloodthirster before he can really do any damage. And oh dear. for Curse, it's about when they get their Trinity Forces. They don't trouble. have them yet. They got that blue. They're going to walk away. Just. Yep, they barely had that. And Curse is really trying to wait this one out. They're getting pushed a little bit. 
but they know that Jace AD is not the best late game team. They know that Jax is better than Renekton, and they know they have the revive for Jax as well. And they get to fight on top of Maokai Ultimate late in the game, who's going to end up having a lot of gold because, I mean, we saw his gold for 10 masteries as well as not even going Mobo Boots and just getting the Philosopher Stone and Heart of Gold early. So Curse is really playing the slow game here, and it seems like Eclipsia is trying to push, but they're getting turrets and not really kills, so the game's staying pretty even. Very much even. Angus is going to continue farming. So, if we're looking even across the board, there's advantages and disadvantages in various lanes. Tab seems to be the main turning point. When we start getting to late game, these team comps, one's got a Jax in there mm -hmm. with a Zillion, so that's going to become a real pain. And a Lulu. And a Lulu as yeah. well, yeah. It can launch and really cause problems for them. How uh, Eclipse you're going to be able to respond to that is Tab's going to be going so aggressive and causing Creaton problems that they're going to have to use the Lulu ultimate on Creaton everyone's going to have to be diving in. And honestly, they're going to have to do the damage to Jax. Otherwise, Jax is just going to completely wreck face on their team. Or actually, maybe not, because they have the Nunu. Might be able to sell the, the Nunu attack speed enough. They might be able to just dive in strong enough. And that's really everything they have to do. Diana, Jace, even Renekton. It's a full dive team. I mean, normally you see a couple dive and a couple ranged AD, but like, Jace is going to be going in with the rest of them. That's even though he's bottom lane, that's a very top lane Jace-like build. So they essentially just have a bunch of bruisers and a Diana on their team, who is a bruiser in her own right. It's going to be very difficult for them to convert through a Maokai, who's very hard to dive. So they've lost the red buff, but you can see that actually he was coming up, but they backed away there. Extinct thought about he could get in position, spotted the whole four members. The cheers still come out for those wards that go down. Ever so, uh, they're starting to fade now. Thank, mm -hmm. thank God, the f <laughs> fading cheers. And Curse are going to be careful they don't get caught in the river here. And Eclipsia is certainly set up and ready for this one. Eclipsia seem to be on the hunt here. They want to start creating problems, but they can't seem to find any gaps, any openings mm -hmm. that Curse are leaving for them. Curse. There is a dragon up, however, and they are roaming down towards it. You can see enemies coming down on Renekton, where Wiles Anguish is just pushing the top lane. They might end up trading a dragon for a turret here, which would be completely okay with Curse, but this is just another example of them trying to get something done. And if they can get the dragon while enemies runs top and stops Jax, that would be a win. He is heading up there. They're looking like they might get the dragon, but you can see Maluno just clearing out that ward just to the side there. He's not got any idea that this is happening, though, so the dragon's going to get picked up for free there by Eclipsia, while the top lane actually is diving on towards the enemy enemies at the top there. Angus Renekton having to be forced to use his ultimate, and he does force them away, but he protected the turret, and they picked up the dragon. Good exchange. So Eclipsia trying ever so slightly to just creep up the advantages but there's a trinity force now finished onto creation's corky and this is getting pretty bad for eclipsia they you say i say it's getting pretty bad with a 2000 gold advantage but i worry about their ability to team fight once there's a bit of tankiness and especially damage on creation he's got the trinity force and the ninja tabi which is very difficult for them to dive on top of him i want to see the first team fight but i just don't know how it's going to happen because curse has free range to just seemingly stall this one out yeah, they certainly do. Angus is just going to get stronger and stronger as he just farms out that top lane once again. He's actually keeping enemies very busy because he's having to go up and react to this one. And Maluna will have just caught a glimpse of tabs there. That's going to give Angus a warning. Yeah, immediately pangs back. They're going to go for that top turret, so the rest of the team need to react and help him out here because they've just pinged it. They want to go and force it. You can see that uh, Heidel's actually going to go down, clear out that wave. He's got a big wave on the bottom that he needs to deal with as well. So don't expect them grouping up too much. As I say that, Extinct starts oh, getting... Oh, he's got Oracles. They flashed for it. Go up for Maokai. They've gone up towards Angus. Angus is going to leap in there, and you can see that Extinct comes in just at the right time. There's the Lulu Waterman, and they're actually backing out this for disengaging. They feel they're not strong enough. Now they're going to dive on towards Extinct. Extinct has got his ultimate, puts the ultimate on himself. They're immediately disengaged. No point continuing chasing. I feel like they could have continued to chase there. I mean, everyone was on the run. Everyone had burned flashes just because he burned his ultimate doesn't mean the fight was turned around, but now can they take anything off of this? Because they burned a flash themselves to get into that fight, and they only burned two flashes on Curse. The ultimates are all actually fairly short cooldowns. You can see already half back on Zillion Alt. Jax Alt is already back. Lulu's two-thirds of the way, really. It's going to be such a struggle for Eclipsey to actually get something done, because that was a fight where they really had the angles on curse and still couldn't come away with anything so for such a dive comp they're really oh, not that great at jumping wrong on choice. top wrong choice he went up towards it realized he's actually pretty low and he's gonna get the stun out but he's gonna get the counter strike didn't land it close enough and that's gonna Here be a comes. dive whoa tabs just zero hundred to zero in split second 
and they're just going to tank out this turret and take it down. He wasn't ready for that. I don't he think was you were ready not for that. ready for the double R from Diana. Really spammed him down. And the Ignite came in too, so how do they capitalize off this? This is a bit of control. Now that's three turrets to zero, they can really start taking pressure on the map. Oracle's clearing out all the wards, denying them back. Still only a 3.3 thousand oh, wow. gold Extinct. advantage though. Extinct's and Extinct might position. get caught out. Go mid, mid. Mid, mid, mid. Extinct's getting caught out of position. You can see he's trying to keep Heidel alive there. And Super Ares comes around, puts that shield down. Should be enough to protect him. Meanwhile, down the bottom, actually, but top lane, sorry, top lane, they're coming around the backside towards Maluno. Chris has slashed landing and just forcing him back. Creaton is there. The rest of the team pushing mid. So they're pushing two lanes at the moment. And honestly, Curse don't seem to have a response to this. And this has to be Eclipse's moment to shine. Tabs hit level 16, now 17. He's got the full amount of magic pen going through. And with that double push, they don't really have enough in mid lane. That mid turret going down fast already at half. Already going down. Angus has now caught himself, put himself in a bit of a dangerous position. They turn towards him. I'm so fresh, he's thinking about going for anything. He has got absolute zero, but he just backs away. The rest of Curse do get in there, and it's a wise choice by Eclipse here. Acceleration get used. They should be out of enough, but you can see Angus speeded up. They wanted to try and pick something off the back, but not going to happen. The rest of Eclipse here reacting, getting in position, and forcing them to back off. They are not done yet. They, they could follow the next wave in and pick up that turret. I just checked the gold, however, though. Everyone's sitting on a fair bit, especially Tabs. He's on 2.3 thousand. And really, his Diana needs to take over the game now because with that 3-0 score and the 260 minion kills, he's way ahead of the rest of the game. 9,200. The next closest in the game is 7,400, at least on Curse. There's 8,000 gold on enemies as Renekton as well. T names tons of damage for those of you that are getting confused. It's just, it doesn't look like much, 2.8 thousand, but they really have to capitalize on it now, and a lot of it just goes right onto the back of Tabs because he has to carry this. So double Trinity Force being picked up. So a bit of a, a bit of a spike for Curse, but is mm -hmm. it enough with the double Trinity? The Athene still, obviously, of course, Maluna's got to be make sure he doesn't get jumped on there. And honestly, I still think Eclipse can take this turret without Curse really reacting. They haven't got creates on nearby. Here they go. They're going aggressive. They're going to force them away from the turret. They pick the turret up. Now they can die for the kills. Tabs is going to 100 to 0 extinct there. Tabs is going to get taken down very low there. Tabs gets dropped. Maloon is still involved in this one. It's Angus to pick up the kill. I'm so fresh. Just managed to get a kill, but I'm so fresh. Oh. Tons of damage going down. Angus can pick up another one here. He's going to have Counter Strike back available in a second. He jumps on towards Kuja, but a good dazzle comes out from Kuja. Is it going to be enough? There's the Counter Strike. He does get the stun. He's going to jump on towards Kuja. The bombs go down. It's not enough. The Creaton tries to put the pressure on. Oh, oh. my word. 40, 40 hit points there. And Heidel turns around. He chases with a couple of shock blasts. But Curse continued to pressure. And that was a good turnaround fight by Curse. This is the comeback fight they kind of need. They have no turrets. It's 4-0. to zero, But you can see with how well they've been farming, only having a 2.7 thousand gold advantage when you're down four turrets and a dragon, or I think it's two dragons, is unreal just how well they've been staying in this game and that fight really showed how Eclipsia has to be worried because they dove in, they got the turret down at the start of the fight, so that was a fairly clean fight for Eclipsia and they pretty much got obliterated even though it was a two for one. Really a matter of them having to get the right fights and a big struggle here. This is gonna be the third dragon I believe they pick up, but it still might not be enough. Curse is actually looking quite strong from a team fight perspective. And here comes Supraz. Throwing that little present through. Maluna's going to get around there. It's not going to be quick they enough. they got to get Shoom out. comes out from Nudu. Acceleration get used, and they can just zip away from that one. And Kuja seemingly enjoying the speed boost he had there with the Blood Boil as well. And they are going to push in. This could be the first turret for Curse here. I don't think Eclipse are really in a position. Oh, they are. They could get around and defend this one. We get a little zoom in. We could zoom back out again, though. If you can scroll that wheel, we're going to zoom in a little bit closer. There's no Teemo on the map. We don't need to go that close. And Angus is just going to keep on the farm. So Eclipse here now in defensive duties, but the rest of Curse, they're going to back away, clear the lanes. And we're already 29 minutes in. This game is really creeping through. It's only 3-3, three to three, but this has been going back and forth with farm for quite a while. See, we're already at 283 minion kills on tabs. The builds are reaching pretty critical points here. Whenever Creatin gets his last whisper, it's going to be very good for him shredding down Renekton because as soon as tons of damage can't dive into the team and kind of tank, they're going to be in real trouble. So as it stands, it is a 3k difference. That's not a great deal when you're looking at 36 to nope. 39k. The advantages from lane are kind of whittling away. Jax has actually now surpassed 
the farm of enemies or tons of damage if you please on Renekton meanwhile the mid lane Tams is continuing to extend his lead there but Corky is also extending his lead and you can see the goal difference is there there's a 2,000 goal difference between Tabs and Extinct on Zillion compared to uh, Diana meanwhile that bottom lane is also actually very close it's only a 300 goal difference despite the fact it's a 70 CS difference and that's just all the global objectives they've been taking three dragons and four turrets to zero is a lot when you add it up and they're still holding all of their outers quite well. You can see Angus trying to get up there, but I imagine Renekton would be up there to counter. Actually, everyone from Curse is falling back. They're still running around with the control of these oracles. They gotta be a little careful though, because it does seem like Curse would have a chance in a team fight, and mm, Angus just dodging out from Tarek. They might start looking around a Baron Force, but this is very tense times here. When you have this few kills this late into the game, it makes the fights very game deciding when they eventually happen. And this could be a standoff maybe for a while here. You can see the saplings going out, keeping the eyes on Eclipse here. Eclipse here have the wards out, so they have the vision. I'm so fresh, creeps his way into the bush. They may be able to sneak around. Kuja may actually go a little bit too deep there. Coming through, putting the ward just through the trees there. And they're going to continue trying to push through here. They've had a back off, actually. Creates on Mega Courts out, has the Valkyrie over towards avoiding that dazzle. As he comes through. And they do clear that wave out. So as it stands, Eclipse here are very nervous. They realize that they, they dove the turret. The turret went down pretty quick, but they can't fight in the turret just yet. They're going to try and sneak out this turret. I wonder if Curse want to fight for this one. I wonder if they're just going to bomb rush them on the turret. Creatine got caught in base, so they're probably going to get this turret clean. If he wouldn't have been back to base, they very much would have wanted the fight. But because of the positioning error, they lose another turret. Purely down to positioning. And, well, they just farm out the minions. Easy farming for uh, them. And they're also going to leave the red as well. So they actually lost quite a lot just by that one single back. Just coordination really by Eclipse here. They've been more coordinated pushing these turrets the whole game, which is strange considering they actually don't have a good ranged turret pushing comp. Everyone pretty much has to be beside it. Jace is very short range for an AD carry. I believe it's 500. I think it's just 500 range flat out. So not much for them from a turret pushing perspective and even with that they've killed five i mean when they're up next to a turret with blood boil and terracoth they kill them very fast but they just curse hasn't been there to answer they've gotten all the turrets through positioning and pressure angus trying to get a position on someone he may leap on towards heidel here if he's not careful just backs off it's all good maluna coming round it is a 4v5 in the mid a 5v5 teller light because everybody has returned that and they are going to back away. They do not want to engage. They do not want to press the, put the pressure on the turret. They have got the acceleration gate. Should they need to change it? There's a cheer. Oh, it's it's definitely it's fading now, and it? it's, it's like oh man. But really, this game is They're going barren. You can tell these teams realize the game is close by the fact that neither one wants to engage on one another unless they know they'd win the fight because they know if they put themselves in a bad position by engaging in the wrong way, they'd lose. And here it might come. A flash a flash dazzle on towards Extinct. He's going to revive, but it's not going to be enough. The rest of his team come back. Is he going to be able to flash out? No, he gets stunned straight up by Tabza getting the kill on him. Zero to a oh. Beautiful moonfall on the rest of Cursor. Having to use the ultimate on towards Maluna. Maluna gets stunned out as well. Heidel picks up the kill and Extinct are in trouble here. Extinct's in trouble, sorry. Extinct's gone down. Angus, you do not want to get involved in this one. Eclipse, you turn around. The turn and burn for Baron. They might want to get involved in this one. Angus would be all alone, unfortunately, actually. Super Racing Creature and going back. That's a fairly low member of Eclipsia, and they're going to concede this entirely. Angus just clearing out Wolves. Level 18, that's a Baron for Eclipsia. You know, I keep thinking that they have these early game team comps that won't be able to close as it reaches later and later. But time and time again this tournament, they're able to push these slight to medium advantages and finish off games. They're on pace to do it this game. I was skeptical in the first part, but I was skeptical in their game, first game against SK as well. They're looking strong now that they picked up that Baron. And we just saw a whole bunch of armor being stacked out there, which is going to cause problems because Angus is not going to be able to do the damage. Creator's not going to be able to do as much damage. If we could look at the item builds, I think it may well be the beginning of a bunch of Guardian Angels. Press Pop X. that X key, <laughs> and we are into the items. And it's, it's crazy because they have 
as I can see P on Piri's not screen. doing it, so yeah. you look at him on yeah. your screen, Jack. It's a Guardian Angel, a Sun Power Cape, and go. a Chain Vest on Renekton. So this tells me they're looking to turret dive so with already. Renekton being the one with the turret aggro, which would allow pretty much everyone else to do their job, and they won't have to worry about Tabs diving in and falling since he's somewhat... I mean, he does have the Zonny's Hourglass, which is good for their build. Every Dino really goes Zonny's Abyssal, but he's still a little squishy. Everyone a little squishy. It's a matter of everyone diving with Renekton, and as their comp goes, everyone diving together with the Baron. I don't know if they need to wait to get another pick. They're going to take off that sixth outer turret, I believe, when they have a chance, and then maybe try for an inner, but those inners are so, so hard oh, to the take cults down. come out there. Heidler was actually going to pick up that big wave in the bottom, where you can see him trekking across they the They said, map. we're pushing mid now. They, we said, we're going to go for mid now. Get yourself over here. We're going to have the next wave coming in, and we can go for it. The next wave is quite a way away. They're going to clear out that wave, and they're just forcing them in. They know that the fact they got the Baron yep. up there. Acceleration gate goes down. Zoom in comes out. Zoom just out a little bit, if you could. If anyone dives in, it's going to have to be Renekton. He's got so much armor right now actually 302 armor when you factor in the Taric aura and the Aegis of legion on nunu if he draws aggro on this turret they're going to be able to take it down there and they go. fight they're going in and they're going to poke back and forth they've already shredded half their hit points off it heidel just needs a couple of shots on towards there with that blood boil he could just manage to get his way in there we've zoomed right in so if you need to zoom out we all back out because we're out <laughs> need to see the game. Piri man, if you are listening, zoom that wheel out right now because we are zoomed in pretty heavily. There we go, getting in tons of damage, diving on towards Maluno. And they do manage to take that turret down. They're going to take the inhibitor as well. There's not a lot that Curse can do about this one. They are going to just shred it down. And Eclipsia taking home every advantage they have. Pinging on the blue buff, they're just going to clean out the jungle. No, they're going to turn it. Heidel thinks he can get the kill here. He's putting the pressure on towards Super S. Look how aggressive he's getting. They're thinking, no, wow, the acceleration oh. gate just blasting on them. Now they're going to back out. And now they've, they've cracked the shell, really, the outer shell of Curse's defenses. Still haven't lost a turret of their own, and just, yeah, watch Renekton tank this turret. How much damage is that doing to him? Not, Not even a sliver. So six turrets to zero and an inhibitor. Really extending this all through global advantages and team play because they didn't really win their lanes. They've just been grouping up well and executing. They've been playing very well here, Eclipse, yeah. I guess you could say the home favorites, they do have three French players, so it would make sense. And now they actually want to get on towards this next turret. Renek has actually gone around the side, so he's split away from them. And Curse have realized it. They've realized they could go for a 4v5 here, but Tabs immediately switches on towards Angus. And now here comes Eclipse here. Eclipse going to turn back on towards them. Angus is the target, it seems, but he's got the Zillion Res on him. They do not want to focus him. They need to switch it around. Shockwave views as well, they're going towards Maluna. Maluna being the target they wanted to go for. Here comes the... Angus, Angus raises back up. He leap strikes back out of they're the damage. So the is getting in there. They're just ripping them apart now. And there goes one. They finally pick up a kill. Kreaton trying his best to pick up a kill, but Heidel turns his attention to Extinct. Extinct backs away, but Heidel gets the triple kill. Slam dunks the hammer on his head and takes him down. Survives the bomb. They're just going to tank through the second turret. They could finish the game here, and they pinged it. They're going to go straight for those super minions. They realize they're coming in towards the Nexus turret. We get a full zoom <laughs> on the super minion, and they are taking the next in down and the eclipse here chance is pretty strong in the house right now creaton's gonna get dived on he's gonna have to back off final nexus goes down jat strong strong game but only a 9-4 low scoring and that game defied a lot of common wisdom i had about league for a bit because they had a, an early game comp right and they weren't ahead but they grouped up everyone got really tanky early and they just used combined force to push down turrets and end that game. A 38-minute slow play game seems like something you do a new new cog jacks with, not.